Now, Rishi Sunak heads to Delhi tomorrow for the G20 summit with hopes of securing a trade deal with the host country, India. But more than 70 MPs want the Prime Minister to use his visit for another purpose, to intervene in the case of a British man who's facing the death penalty in India. The cross-party group is urging Mr Sunak to speak to Prime Minister Modi about the case of 36-year-old Jagtar Singh Johal from Dumbarton in Scotland. He's a campaigner for the human rights of Sikhs and he's been detained there since 2017, accused of murder and attempted murder linked to political violence in India. He's claimed that he has been tortured and the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention says that he has been targeted because of his activism and said that his continued detention lacks any legal basis. We'll be hearing from one of the MPs, former government minister, in a few moments. First, though, joining us is uh, Jagtar's brother, uh, Gurpreet Singh Johal. Welcome to the programme. Thank you. Um, When did you last speak to your brother? So the last time I spoke to Jackta was the 8th of August and he'd be, he was allowed to phone the family and speak. And it was just after the Supreme Court hearing in India where the Supreme Court had dismissed the Indian prosecution appeal to not grant Jackta bail in one of the cases. How hopeful are you that the Prime Minister will, will speak to Mr Modi and will raise your brother's case? I think there's a correction that needs to be made initially with the introduction that you provided was Jector has been accused of conspiracy to murder, not actual murder. Mm. Um, in respect of Jector, uh, Rishi Sunak raising the case with Prime Minister Modi, previously Boris Johnson and Theresa May have raised the case, but we've moved quite far on. We're six years nearly on, and the UN Working Group of Arbitrary Detention have declared Jector's detention arbitrary and a call for his immediate release. Now, the UK have a policy, if you're arbitrarily detained, to call for release and they have rightfully done so um, for Nazdin and Anushi. So in in, that was in quite, Iran we're talking about. In Iran, yeah, in Iran. So they haven't done that for Jack Tur. It's been six years almost. And I think it's a point where if he doesn't do this and false allegations, which have become false charges, comes a false conviction and there'll be blood on Rishi Sunak's hands. So he's got an opportunity to protect his citizen and show the British public that he will stand up for British uh, citizens and not put trade the, over human rights. Well, the, the government says, of course, that they have raised your brother's case on more than 100 occasions. Um, we, we did ask them for a comment. The, um, the Minister of State for South Asia, Lord uh, Ahmad, I think has spoken to your family, has met your family on several occasions, says the government is committed to seeing Jagtar Singh Jal's case resolved as soon as possible. As I underlined during my meeting with his family in Scotland, we continue to provide consular assistance to him and his family and have consistently raised his case directly with the government of India. You, uh, you don't think it's enough, though? No, raising the case is one thing. The, previously, what they've raised for was consular access to Jagtar. We don't know exactly what the UK government are raising with the Indians. The matter is clear. For six years, Jagtar has been arbitrarily detained in an Indian prison. He's been subject to torture. He's subject to mental torture to date. There's no trial in sight, and if a trial was to proceed at the, the pace it's going at just now, he could be in there for nearly 40-odd years before there's a decision. So it's quite categorically clear that the Indians haven't produced any evidence. As his brother, I'd say he's innocent. It's innocent until proven guilty, but the Indians have placed it to be guilty until proven innocent. It's quite clear in respect of the UN Working Group opinion that Jack has been arbitrarily detained, um, the UK government either have to say that they don't agree with the UN Working Group opinion and that's why they're not calling for his release or abide by what their own policy is. Is it possible that they simply don't think a direct appeal from Prime Minister to Prime Minister will actually help things? Well, they've tried soft diplomacy for the last six years and my brother's been detained for six years. That's a long time. It's 2,134 days that I've been separated from my brother. His wife was only married 14 days when she's seen her husband abducted in front of her eyes. And she hasn't even been able, been able to start her married life. So it's a long time. And if there was evidence against Jack Tur, you would actually, and common sense prevails here, the Indians would have started the trial, 
produced the evidence, convicted him and hanged him. That's, that's the bottom line. But six years on, not to, pres not to produce an ounce of uh, evidence and instead prolong the hearings as long as they can. Witnesses don't turn up. The prosecution yeah. doesn't turn up. So it's at a level now that it's beyond... Uh, there is no doubt there is no evidence. All the Indians want to do is prolong their detention for as long yeah. as they can before they actually say, OK, we've made a mistake. G Gurpreet Singh Johal, we have to leave it there. Thanks very much. Uh, well, earlier I spoke to Conservative MP, former Government Minister David Davis. He's been following the cl case closely. It's become more and more prominent in recent times simply because he's not been released. He's basically been held under arbitrary detention for five years, having suffered torture with electrical wires attached with private parts and other parts of him, uh, other sorts of beatings and torture, and forced into signing blank sheets of paper, not even a confession, a blank sheet of paper that they can put the confession on afterwards. So this should not be the behaviour of an ally towards a British subject. Of course, the Indian government denies torture and number 10 says, look, they've raised this case more than 100 times. Do you think the Prime Minister can make a difference? The Indian government denies it, but the UN Working Group has found plainly that on about a dozen counts, it's an arbitrary detention under all sorts of international and national laws. And if Rishi Sunak can't influence the... Uh, Indian government, I don't know who can. Why do you say that? I mean, firstly, the hundred times. Well, that's fine. That's counting every time a diplomat's talk to them. And, and I don't expect that. The, I, I used to be a foreign office minister myself. You know, it's a very professional organisation at one level. It will do all the consular visits and the representations and so on. But foreign governments, they make judgments about how seriously another government takes an issue. So if they send along you know, the deputy to the high commissioner... That's one level. If they send along the foreign secretary, that's a much, much more serious level. And if the prime minister raises it, that's a, that's a more serious level again. Uh, and that's what we need to happen here. This man has been in near solitary confinement for five years with a, a death sentence hanging over him, because that's what this amounts to. We need to move on it. We should not tolerate this treatment of a British citizen. What do you make of this letter from the foreign secretary in which... He says that it's not good to press India on these issues because it might jeopardise consular visits and the like. Well, I'm sorry, but that should not be a stance the Foreign Office take. We shouldn't be tolerating the argument that uh, we can't have a consular visit. I don't know whether it's a right in Indian law. It certainly would be a right in, in British law. Uh, so we shouldn't be tolerating that. Secondly, it's an incredibly bad precedent. You know, if we accept that sort of argument from India, what happens when somebody gets arrested by Russia and we get the same response, or Iran, or North Korea, any other country which is actually not an ally? Do you think there is something else going on here? The family certainly believes that there's a relationship reluctance to push on this because there's a bigger prize, if you like, of a trade deal with India? Well, I hope that's not true, and I think it's unlikely. I think the, the simple truth is, in some ways, that gives us more leverage, you know. Uh, a trade deal is a deal. It's not a concession, right? And, for example, the Indians want more legal uh, immigration to the UK by Indians as a part of the trade deal, I think. We can be tougher on that if need be. We should start each trade deal discussion with a conversation uh, about Mr Yohal. We should keep telling people, you want to have a good relationship with us. Good relationship's not just going to be about money, it's got to be about the way we treat each other's citizens. No Indian citizen, as far as I'm aware, in my lifetime has ever been treated this way in the United Kingdom. Uh, we shouldn't expect a British citizen to be treated this way in India. So what should the Prime Minister's approach be? How should he go into this? To be fair to him, he has a limited time because it's a G20 meeting. It's not just a bilateral. If it was a bilateral, I'd, I'd want a lot more. But he should raise the matter at the beginning of the discussion and say, you know, you should understand this is very important to us and we need a resolution on it and a resolution quickly, preferably a release of our citizens. One of the difficulties is that the British government has not really accepted the argument of arbitrary detention. Now, this is extraordinary because the UN has said this, is, this detention is arbitrary on about a dozen different counts on different laws and so on. So you know, we should be very firm on that. This is an arbitrary detention and should lead to release. The argument that will come back from the Foreign Office, and it's come back to me from officials in the Foreign Office, is we can only insist on a proper trial. We can't insist on release. Well, I'm sorry. Five years' detention without trial is just not good enough. I mean, it wouldn't be allowed in this country, even under the most the greatest of duress, even when we had terrorism at its worst in this country, we didn't do that and neither should we expect the Indians to do it with our citizens. Conservative MP David Davis.